Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back. So, welcome to another Monster Spotlight. Today, I have with me I Fail and his Dark Wild Fang. Now, this is actually very gen like I, I can't even talk. This is actually jumped up very, very well. This this Dark Wild Fang is nearly perfect. It has a hundred percent crit rate on Intuition. I think the only thing that can make it any better is like if you have it on Ruin, but it's also very, very hard to push a hundred percent crit rate on Ruin. But what he did is he actually has some very, very nice crit damage substats. He has a thirteen percent crit damage sub here and a 16% sub here. So basically it's like almost the equivalent of having a ruin set. It's basically at nearly, uh, it's, a, it's almost at 30%. And that is actually quite a lot of difference. It's also on triple attack. So this, this thing's gonna hit very, very hard and it's gonna be very consistent damage because of the 100% crit rate. Now, I'm going to, uh, he actually requested that I compare the damage of this monster to some other monsters that have um, that are basically nuker types. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare with my Dark Gatito, who is who is uh, also on Intuition, crit rate double attack, and doesn't really have like you know very very good substats, but it's still pretty nice. Um, I'm going to just basically compare the damage of these two monsters. I don't think B10 would be the right place to do this. Maybe hmm. B7 has a lot of defense. Maybe I should do this in Star Stones. I feel like I should do this in Star Stones. I, I really don't want anything to die because they're like full glass cannon. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test this out in Star Stones. It's going to be element neutral, so I won't have any sort of like, you know, elemental advantage. But it doesn't really matter that much because they're both dark monsters. They're, they're both going to hit insanely hard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a Cupid. Um, put a Cupid. For Fenris sake, I won't use an attack leader. I'll use the Cupid to make sure um, they can stay alive. And then I'll use the Dark Thor for the armor break, of course. And then I'll put in my Dark Gatito and the Dark Wild Fang. All right. I'm gonna turn off auto. I'm gonna turn it to one time speed, and we're gonna. I think it will be a good idea to compare the damage on these two ghosts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually. Um, I'm going to armor break one of them first. I'll, I'll armor break this one on the next turn. And then what we're going to do is um, I'll have one person hit this robot and then one person hit the slime. Obviously on first kill my, my Gatito won't do as much damage, but this this wall thing should be hitting this, this slime pretty hard. So that was like 13k each. I'm going to just make sure I waste my Cupid's attack before I send in my wall thing, send, send this wall thing in. Alright, so it's like a... 14 to 16 um, K crit, so it's like 2 K more basically. All right, we're gonna armor break this one as well, and then I'm gonna test out the Dark Gatito damage on this one on first skill with uh, 22 K, and then we'll have this thing hit with 23 K. All right, so it's it's definitely it's definitely um. A little bit higher than the wild thing, or a little bit higher than the Gatito because of the triple attack gem. And obviously, I think a little bit better gems as well. So we're going we're gonna to try this out again. Um, nobody really has a full bar yet. We're going to do this exact same thing. And we're going to just basically armor break the two ghosts, you know, to basically do the, t do the damage test again. And then hopefully on the next wave, I'll have my bars up to, like, all up to full. And then we'll be able to really see some damage. Right, I'm going to waste the attack and then we'll um, we'll kill this ghost. We'll kill this robot thingy. Oh, she does four hits. I just realized. Wait, does the Gatito do three or four hits? If she does four hits, she basically does 25% more damage. Wait, I need to I need to watch this closely. All right, so the Gatito does one, two, three. Oh, she does four hits. I didn't. I wasn't counting properly. Yeah, she she does basically twenty, like a twenty-five percent more damage in the Dark Gatito because of the fourth hit. Man, I feel really dumb right now. All right, let's test out that AOE. And then. Um, Alright, so basically these two robots, one of them is armor broken, the other one isn't. So when I do this AoE, you can see the damage difference between the two two robots. One on armor break and one one without. Two, three. 
That was like three hits of 50k. That was like 150k. 150k on, on armor break. I didn't see how much without armor break because the animation was actually way, way too fast. Um... But yeah, obviously I think the the Dark Atito on on the on the second skill because it's single target will definitely do more damage. But you you have to keep in mind the Dark Wild Fang is a is a uh, AOE monster, so she does have like an AOE nuke on her second skill. We actually might not get the chance to uh, to do two damage tests, but then we'll we'll try we'll try again. We'll hit the boss and see uh, how much damage without armor break. It's like 12k on the on the boss. It's not bad. Not bad at all. All right, we'll send we'll send uh we'll send these three to go kill the slime. All right, this is definitely a lot of damage. Hmm, we might actually kill the boss with this. Come on, don't die. Get your AoE. Alright, perfect, perfect. Okay, we're gonna have the Wild Thing finish off the boss and then do do her AoE nuke again so we can see the the damage count on the um on the boss with armor break. Ooh, that was I think that was three hits of 43 K. It's definitely really high. Now I don't know how how good she is compared to the Dark Moonflower, but I think she's definitely up there as one of the best um, best Dark Nukers in the game. I kind of forgot to show her skills, but anyone, pretty much like everybody knows, well at least if you've been if you've uh, been watching the monsters, you know that she has Stalker on her two skills. So the the way you actually build these the the Dark Wild thing is um, the reason why she's actually pretty good as a Nuker, even with the Stalker skill. Stalker skill because most Stalker monsters aren't aren't that exceptional, but she is actually very very good for a Stalker monster. the The main reason is because she's dark, and her being dark means that she comes with a base of a hundred percent crit damage, meaning and she also comes with you know Stalker basically giving her thirty percent crit, and then with plus the ten percent crit, she starts off with a hundred percent crit damage and forty percent crit. So like. Just just that alone puts her ahead of a lot of other monsters in terms of um, in terms of damage, and then you stack some gems on top. Like basically, you can use three attack, meaning you can use three attack gems. You don't have to waste one of your slots on a crit rate gem, and you can get, put her on triple attack. You know, getting her attack to nearly um, nearly 10k, and yeah, and then and then she's gonna do like a lot of damage basically. So. Yeah, that's definitely really nice. Um, Wild Things do 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 a lot of hits on their first skill. It's like four hits, so that's definitely really really good for blue blue soul generation. That was actually a little bit short. Um, it was kind of unfortunate. I kind of I was afraid to test it out on B B10, but I so I decided to you know play it safe and do it on um, on the stages before because I because they're both like super squishy. Like if a Dark Moonflower decides to hit them and crit, I can basically just die in one turn. So I. Um, had to play a little bit safe, but I think it's definitely a really, really nice monster. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.